Oh, good day, Scrappers. Today I'm going to be doing the second part of depopulating boards. Uh, again, just to help uh, new Scrappers out in what to actually take off boards for precious metal recovery. Um, I basically cover the most obvious components. I'm um, sure, you know, as uh, some people have mentioned in the other depopulating video, that uh, there are things like resistors and stuff that um, that will have traces of precious metals. Some will have a little bit of gold, um, you know, silver and stuff like that. So your, your basic mid-grade kind of board. Um, yeah, there are uh, items that are, you know, like these resistors. You know, I mentioned in the other video that these rainbow type of resistors don't really have many precious metals that we really know of. Now some guys will say, oh no, the, you know, um, you know, there's a guy that got some gold out of there or some silver out of there. Well, yeah, that's all well and good, but generally they're not really known for their precious metals. So there's no real, um, you know, pigeonhole for, for these kind of things. But yeah, absolutely. If you go through manufacturers, um, you know, the way they sort of put them all together, you'll find that some manufacturers have got versions of these rainbow kind of resistors that have gold and platinum inside. But that's like one in a million. And um, so overall, we don't really um, chase this, this kind of thing for, um, you know, personal um, precious metal recovery. Say, for instance, if you had a million of these and uh, you bag that and try to sell it on eBay, no one will really buy it for precious metal recovery because you know anyone that knows will know that there's you know there'll be 0 0.001 of a percent of um resistors like this that will have any real precious metals and like i said before yeah sure there will be traces of silver in a lot of little things but um you know it's just not the kind of thing that we're we're really going for but you know it's up to you but if 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 people are depopulating these resistors, then you might as well consider everything on the board um, as potential precious metals. Um, even underneath the board itself, the tracing, uh, as you know, most of them are copper. But when you get into the higher end, you could have gold flashing as uh, tracing underneath. Sometimes even gold plating, really, really good quality gold plating. So, um... Yeah, so if I, so what I suggest is, if you think that there's, you know, that just about everything has precious metals, then you might as well not even depopulate the boards, because then that's assuming the whole thing is precious metals, well, just keep the board as it is, or um, crush it all down and process it, you know, as one, um, as one you know, item, rather than taking off crystals and IC chips and um capacitors and stuff like that so anyway uh just wanted to get that out of the way about a year ago i think i'd done a video on depopulating boards and i was using one of these air hammers and so this is a really good uh little thing to help depopulate your boards really quickly it beats any other method like sand bath or um anything else you can imagine but um the problem with this that I pointed out back then, and uh, it's still now, is that you end up with a lot of this crumbled stuff. And this is all pretty much good stuff in here, and, um, you know, and I don't mind sitting around sort of picking out a lot of this stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it really is a, a mess. And so, for the average scrapper, I'm not sure I recommend uh, doing it like this, or even for any scrapper really, unless you're um, going to be throwing this whole lot into a special machine that's going to process it all for you. Um, it's very hard to sort through, and people have mentioned to put it through a sieve and uh, different gauge uh, sieves and, and try and sort it out, but that doesn't really work because um, things are all kind of the same kind of size, and, and so, and like tantalum capacitors, there are all different sizes of tantalum capacitors. So every grade of sorting you're going to go through, you're going to get the same variation in in every every gauge of um, sorting. So, um, 
yeah so this is a bit of a nightmare and not to mention that not every scrapper is going to have um, an air gun um, because you need a, you know an, an air compressor and so for most scrappers they don't want to invest in an air compressor or just don't have anywhere to put it they're very noisy when you're using them so for me personally I've developed a kind of a half and half depopulating system now rather than just going whole hog with the uh, air hammer and I recommend this for um, most you know scrappers is to actually hand pick most of the uh, components off the boards uh, first and that way you're going to be able to um, you know really distinguish what's what say for instance um, you got MLCCs here but you know as you know there are resistors and um, inductors um, mixed in with all that so when we depopulate with an air hammer we're removing all that and and mixing it all up so what I recommend is pick off um, your MLCCs and and the components that you want first and then later on um, when you've got most of the uh, recognizable items then if you want to go and depopulate the whole lot using the air hammer and getting this sort of stuff well at least then you've got most of your good components uh, sorted out um, for instance tantalums or you know most mostly the MLCCs because you know they can be if you're picking MLCCs for your own precious metal recovery one day you know you're, you're much better off picking by hand and I don't really go for the really really tiny ones anymore it's just uh, just way too much work so um, anyway we'll just go through um, some of the boards and um, I'll just start picking off stuff how I do it and what I do at the end is after I've hand picked what I want I'll take it like I don't hand pick plugs and pins and st stuff like that so then when I've got all the good stuff off the board I'll take it to the um, air hammer bay and I'll start and I'll take off all the other things like these these plugs and pins and all that and anything else that might be on them again I've got my little sorted uh, little trays here um, I sort different IC chips the crystals the crystal oscillators um, fingers I have a tray here just for little things that I pick off that are for gold recovery it could be anything uh, so there are just so many different types of things with uh, you know little gold plating on them that uh, I just have a little separate uh, tray just for all kinds of mixed stuff like that uh, the crystal oscillators any ones that are um, got gold bases or say for instance LEDs with gold legs and um, these things with the gold legs and all that anything like that I'll just keep separate again as well okay so I'm just assuming that you you you're not sure of anything that you're um, taking off and one thing that I recommend to uh, new scrappers that um, aren't sure of every component because you you don't have to you know go and research every little component to understand uh, what contains precious metals I mean it does help you know if um, say for instance uh, um, you want to know what that is I mean it's it's an aluminium capacitor but if you if you did a bit of um, research like on YouTube and you uh, sorry on Google and you um, typed in those little numbers up the top here it'll basically tell you it's what it is it's a um, aluminium capacitor and then you could go further and research you know materials inside a aluminium capacitor and so on um, so these things here that look like IC chips they're like little copper kind of um, coils inside so these are the only ones that they're usually on telecom kind of equipment uh, modems and and above um, so once you get used to what it is, you, you won't even bother taking it off the board. Um, but uh, So this is what I recommend. So you get this unusual looking IC chip and you say, well, okay, is that an IC chip or, or, or what? Well, probably the best thing you do is just sort of break into it and um, have a look for yourself. And I recommend that with all 
um, components until you get used to it is to actually have a look inside and and see what you got now in here see these are all little copper coils so there's no um, you know gold recovery or anything like that it's not an IC chip um, and so therefore once you've bust open a few and you realize that these uh, oversized looking IC chips um, only have this copper stuff in there um, and you know then you're just gonna automatically say oh yep no nah, that's not something I'm going to remove um, and then you know like things like these unusual boxes now uh, as you know a lot of um, components on the board will have codes so if it's unless it's an IC chip which is obvious um, but things like uh, MLCC's they should have a little C uh, next to it if they've got an L they're inductors um, and um, and yeah so anyway so like these two boxes here what are they they're quite unusual looking thing they look kind of like transformers so here we go yes it that's a transformer okay so um there you go now you know what they actually call these things it doesn't really matter you know um um when you're scrapping don't think that you have to know every little component you'll see some comments from electrical guys come in oh that's a this and that's a that and it doesn't make any difference we're going for um what's actually inside not not you know what it actually does who really cares <laughs> Um, so obviously that's a little transformer um, you just throw them in with transformers um, but you know if you do enough you break into enough of things like that you're going to eventually learn where you're not going to have to waste your time later on so here is another one now this this box here it's it's got a T T for Tango um, so what's a T it's most likely a transformer okay and once again we've got a transformer so you can just throw these in with your transformers. Sometimes transformers are worth breaking into and getting the copper out. Sometimes they're just uh, wound up in uh, sticky tape, so they're not really that that worth it. Um, so, okay, so we've got through them. So I'm going to cut through some of the oddball stuff that I know that there's really nothing in there, but just for the sake of it. Now here we've got a capacitor, okay, now I've mentioned in the other video, a lot of these capacitors don't have any precious metal value in there. It's certainly not a tantalum capacitor. We're not going to get to the unusual uh, resin dip tantalum capacitors until we get to uh, more high-end boards. So uh, in these MIG type grade boards, uh, you won't find many tantalum capacitors. Um, so. Um, so pretty much anything like this is just a capacitor and again you're going to see you know you're going to get, see comments from guys saying oh hang on but there's silver in that or there's some you know a friend of mine done these and there's gold in there you know well um you know maybe if you've gotten a extraordinary sample but uh these are basically just uh, your your standard aluminium capacitors okay so what you can do with all these aluminium capacitors like these and uh, these ones with the little capacitor juice inside and stuff you can throw all these into irony aluminium or dirty aluminium uh, whatever your scrapyard calls but I've mentioned before that it takes you know you're only getting like um, 20 cents a pound or 30 cents a kilo here in Australia um, you know and it takes hundreds of these to make up a kilo so even a thousand of them they're so light and you're only getting 30 cents for every thousand so for some it's worth it for others it may not be but uh, what I'm assuming here is that the scrappers that um, that depopulate boards are not going for partial depopulation and then going to sell these boards after this is assuming that you don't sell your circuit boards at all and you're you just want to get everything of scrap value um, and so in that case aluminium you know capacitors are do have a little bit of scrap value but if you're spending a lot of time on these uh, it just depends on how many boards you get some guys only get a couple of pieces of e-waste a week and so um, for them they may as well maximize everything they get and um, and and so yeah by all means go for it so okay um, we've done the little transformers so I can I can get these these out the way just to clear the space a bit 
So again, we've got a little copper coil transformer. All right, now, what do I want out of this, or what do we want out of this for precious metal recovery? Well, as I said, I, um, I'm handpicking all of my stuff these days, and um, partial handpick, and then go on with the uh, air hammer to go further. So, first thing I want, obviously, my little crystal. So I take the little crystal, throw that in the tray. Uh, obviously, I want all the IC chips. So I first remove the aluminium. So that piece goes into extruded aluminium. And we've got a, a nice BGA chip here. And it's the only BGA on the thing. And so here's the option. You know, like, like I said, not many are going to have an air hammer. Um, and even if you do invest in a, um, an air hammer, you don't really need to pop all these off with the air hammer. I find that um, it breaks up a lot of the ceramic on the top. And um, so me, I just prefer to pick the cream stuff off by hand and then go with the air hammer for all the junky stuff. Or, you know, the less valuable. So all I use is a screwdriver and a little hammer. You can use anything you like. And all I want to do is just... Pop off the IC. And there we go, BGA, one of the best types of BGAs. I sort them uh, straight away into my BGA pile, and that's it. And there you go. So we've we've removed that part. So, okay. So now all I want is um, I want the IC chips. So again, with these really flat kind of IC chips, they don't really, they're not very good coming off with these. Um, uh, air hammers because they do crush them up a lot so I find it's just easier that just to pop them off like that these ones can be a little bit messy you know so that's just a broken up IC chip still throw into ICs um, okay Sorry, I'm, I'm, I just haven't got my bearings yet, so I'm not really sure where I'm going, but... Okay, let's remove a couple of things that we want to see underneath. So I'll get this little board off. You know, they call them like... When there's a board on top of a board, they're usually called daughter boards, but it doesn't matter to us. Now, as we can see here, we've got little little copper transformers and stuff. There's no precious metal stuff. So we can um, I can put this away and... Um, and uh, get into this later on and remove all these little copper things. We do have some gold pins here. They're not very good, but um, I'll get to them as well. All right, so I'll get the shield off. We'll have a look at under there. So under here, we've got a little BGA chip, which is a good one. And there's also a tiny little crystal. So best way to get some of these off because they're really stuck on it's just a bit of force okay. okay so what we want here obviously we've got a really nice grade one BGA chip and we've got that tiny little crystal oscillator with the gold bands so Showed you these before, that's them here. Um, they're you know, very small usually, sometimes really tiny. Sometimes you get big ones like that. Like that's a really nice chunky one. And that's all ceramic underneath um, with the metal top. So it's almost like a ceramic CPU. Um, you know, you've got long flat ones. I think I had one here that was, yep. Yeah. So here, so you've got the ceramic base you got the metal top. This one was broken up a bit. So if you lift that metal, you can see the gold plating under there. And there's also fine bonding wires underneath that gold that you see. Um, I just find these really good. Very, uh, very similar to a ceramic gold CPU. Okay. So that's that one there. And again, when you remove them with air hammers, You'll, you'll, 
you'll smash this up and all you'll probably end up getting is just a cap just a metal top the ceramic will smash up so I just prefer to do these by hand and I just get my screwdriver to the side and just left to right and wedge it out of its solder and so there we go this one's a very very small one um, but it's it's a mid-grade board so I wouldn't expect it to be too big but because it's a modem from a modem um, I do expect these to be on there here's another one here a, a much bigger one okay. so it's just a push down left to right and we remove the the whole thing so without breaking the ceramic so we've got a nice um, piece there but sometimes you'll only end up removing that top part and that's when you'll see inside just how beautiful um, gold plating there is in there it's re they're really really nice um, okay and then what else we got here well we've got a lot of stuff so I'll remove some of these IC chips just to clear the way flat um, BGA flat pack Okay. So there we go, nice and clean, flat pack, high grade BGA, and an IC chip. Okay, tiny little IC chips, same thing, you can go picking off them. You might want to first start picking off the bigger stuff before you go for these really tiny little ones. Um, and here's another little thing that, um, you know, one of those things that if you're not sure what it is or you don't see them very often always take it off break into it and just have a look some of these may have gold in them some won't uh, some will have silver but again these things i'm not really sure what they are the this the lettering is a k for kilo so a k i don't have the list here to um identify what each of these unusual letters are but it doesn't matter you don't need to know everything you just bust into it and here i can see it's just copper coil so there's no gold there's not going to be really any gold in here or anything like that well see i just made a liar out of myself so okay you can see that little end here that little cap so we've got a little bit of gold plating there so it just depends on how fiddly you want to get um again it's it's this component is not generally known for gold, but that's a good example that even components that aren't known for gold can have a little bit of gold plating, uh, contact points, silver, and stuff like that. So, um, so in this case, if you're just after maximizing every little um, board that you've got and trying to get all the gold recovery, well, then you know you might want to spend your time and and sort of break out that little piece, of, that little plate. Okay, and so not much there. Very, very tiny and fiddly. But yeah, it's just the end cap there where um, there is a little bit of gold plating. But you know, you're going to need millions of these to get any kind of real gold by the time you uh, work at it. But uh, like I said, you know, if you're just after gold, well, it pays to um, look into stuff the C so we know that that's mostly copper and a little bit of gold and then we go to the the most probably confusing for people are MLCCs well they're not really confusing they're pretty straightforward um, and they don't always have codes on the board like this board there's there's quite a few MLCCs and they don't have the the code C um, and so if there is inductors um, in amongst these you're not going to really be able to tell whether it's an inductor or an, or an MLCC That's why it's a little bit hard to buy MLCCs from people because um, They're not always going to be MLCCs. So but that's fine So all I do is I just go around and I just pick off the main MLCCs the bigger ones, you know um, And just with a screwdriver and I just sort of you know they just pop off virtually okay okay so so here we got MLCCs and 
then they get really really small and uh, so this is probably not the best example of a, a board with LCCs but um, yeah once they get really really tiny um, I'll, I'll show you in a few other boards but okay so what else do we want out of this we've gotten say MLCCs we're going to take all these little IC chips out I don't worry about the capacitors um, yeah not a really great example this board to really show you other side well you know the standout is the crystal oscillator with the gold band again we want that we've got some nice MLC's here see these nice big chunkies uh, these ones are marked with a C uh, no question about that so all of these I want to remove especially the big ones they're just much easier to handle and um, it just depends um, how the board's laid out like if you have a whole row of MLCC's um, you know like here you can't just go whoosh with the screwdriver right and skim through it because you got MLCC uh, they're thick film resistors then another MLC then another three thick, thick film resistors so if I just start scraping through there um, sure you're going to remove those thick film resistors but in doing research and I'll show you some bigger ones uh, later but they're basically uh, they they got little numbers on the top they're usually black or blue and they got numbers clear numbers on the top and um, their resistors they'll have a marking of an R um, now these we know that there is ruthenium and silver in there but in further research um, it turns out that ruthenium is very very hard to recover and it's also a very toxic process this stuff can really uh, knock you about so I don't recommend going for thick film resistors uh, because there is no way that you're going to be able to refine them in any way whether today or in the future um, ruthenium is just something that you know you're best to steer clear of if you're not really sure you know I recommend anyone that um, is into um, is going to be into gold recovery and stuff if you want to learn don't really rely much on YouTube videos to learn how to recover gold and precious metals okay go to somewhere like a uh, gold recovery forum um, forums like that where you've got a lot of experienced people people that, that have been recovering um, precious metals from stuff like this for 20 30 years they're going to tell you straight out um, and you know they're going to give you honest opinions on things like ruthenium and um, that's where you get your best to get your advice you know um, watching someone's YouTube channel how they recover gold and that it's it's the reason why I don't make videos on gold recovery it's just that you know um, I, I don't want to you know I, I've never recovered gold yet so sure I can do a lot of research and I can whip up something really quick get a few jars together and start um, trying to recover gold but uh, all I'll be doing is probably killing myself and I certainly don't want to pass that on to other people where you got uh, young kids saying oh geez oh, that looks easy I'll just go and get myself some hydrochloric acid and some nitric acid and I'll whack it all together and you know it's it, there's it's a lot more complicated than that it's not a matter so I don't want to just go out and make some videos just to get views um, and to show oh, this is how I recover gold and you'll see these awful little processes where you'll see these big bowl of black goo that's bubbling away and the toxic fumes are going everywhere I'm not going to do that um, and so I'm not gonna I don't want to show anyone um, a rough method of precious metal recovery so if you're wondering when I'm going to actually recover my metals well if you go to my stockpiling videos you'll find that uh, where I talk about um, recovering in the future that's way into the future when we do have much better um, backyard processes um, and very safe processes rather than what they're doing today and sure you'll get a whole lot of heroes on YouTube saying oh yeah oh, it's easy to recover you know and and all they've probably ever done is recover gold from you know your really simple gold fingers and stuff like that anything else it starts getting a lot more complicated and um, you either got to be rough of guts or um, put a lot of money into a really good setup with fume hoods and all your all your really good equipment but anyway so here we've got, uh, this is probably from 
a TV or something like that. It's not a bad board. Again, we've got all these capacitors. Don't even worry about them. If you want, um, you know, if you've got nothing better to do and you don't have much to process, just to um, get them out the way and to clear the room to so you can have a better look at the board, you know, you might want to take them all off like that. Okay, or again, use use an air hammer and just so we can get better access to the better stuff. But again, you can throw these into irony aluminium or dirty aluminium and you can get your, you know, 15 cents a pound or whatever it is. But like I said, it takes thousands to get that. But, you know, better than throwing them out, I suppose. Um, okay, so here I've got crystals. So I want to take the crystals out. Okay, so we've got three crystals here for silver recovery. Um, very small silver recovery, but it's just one of those things that I like to keep, and they're very recognizable. There's no question that there is silver in these. And, um, and hey, one day, uh, we're not taking these off because silver is worth uh, $16 an ounce. Um, we're taking these off because one day silver might be worth $60 an ounce or $600 an ounce and that's when people are going to be looking after this sort of stuff. Um, the only thing I do uh, to really speed up the process if you ever do go to process them and um, add more value to them is remove these little legs if they're still on and that little black plastic piece there and that way I've got a nice clean crystal to put in my thing so I don't store away any with that black because it would just be a whole lot of mess just to have to once you've got thousands of these I would hate to have to be doing that so each time I pull off a crystal and they got that black plastic I'll just uh, remove those legs remove the black plastic and that's it nice and easy okay so here oh there's another crystal there so here we've got Beautiful IC, uh, IC chip, BGA, all over. Again, it's a mid-grade board, so there's not really much um, else interesting on these boards to take off. We've got the little MOF sets uh, that I've uh, showed you in the old video. So you've got all those kind of MOF sets, and we know that there is uh, copper inside them. Uh, and so on so okay so all I'm doing here I want to get my BGA so that's a classic example of um, of a BGA that breaks up so you're losing all this ceramic stuff um, or plastic in this case um, that's fine you just put them in with the chips uh, that black stuff that I'm removing is usually better for gold recovery than this part here. But um, so I just, you know, just still throw them in. All right, BGA, we want our IC chip. Oh. Okay. And in this case, it's really done me a favor by removing all the legs and uh, ready to go, this one. Okay. And so the legs are still stuck on there. Now that wouldn't happen if we were using an air gun, you would remove the whole legs and all. So in this case it was a really good because we got rid of all the legs in the first place. Um, and yeah, so it's probably not until we get to the really high grade boards where I can show you um, other un uh, good stuff to remove. Uh, most of the boards that you'll get, it's really straightforward. We're just going for the IC chips. We're going for the MLCCs. Now, here we've got very, very tiny MLCCs. Really, really tiny um, rows of them. And, and a lot of cases, there'll be um, in between the rows of MLCCs, there'll be a resistor, MLC resistor. So that's when I don't skim them off. But when I see them really clean like that, and it's just MLCCs. Now, there's no um, markings on it. Well, there is, but it's a marking for the whole grid. So this is really tiny and very fine. And if you do this with the air hammer, you're not going to get these little ones. So you're probably better off skimming if you're sure that there's no other components in amongst it like resistors and that because you want to make sure that you've got a good clean um, 
batch of MLCCs, but sometimes the really shiny black ones inside, it's in the center there, they can be inductors. So this is the problem when you're going for the real small ones, is trying to, uh, uh, being able to identify what is an actual, and I can actually see that little bit there, that's actually a resistor, thick film resistor, and it's tiny. So you can't avoid getting that. So when you get stuff like this, I don't recommend putting it into your MLCC pile, like with the nice big chunky ones, the ones that you know are certainly MLC. I recommend putting this into a, a mixed batch um, where it's going to have all kinds of things. And you're better off putting this, this sort of stuff in with your crumbles and later like i'm still yet to sort out this crumble stuff so but later on when i've taken out all the recognizable components here we're going to be left with very very tiny crumbled up bits of pieces and and that's just going to um remain like that and hopefully one day we can process that as as just like a a mixed bag of stuff but yeah on these kind of mid-grade boards there's really not much we've got the pins obviously a little bit of gold pins here. Uh, we've got a, a little flat pack inside that little mount. We can just break that whole thing off. Okay, so we take our little flat pack. Okay, now some of these aren't IC chips. There's so many different things that these can be called, um, but it's still the same principle. Um, and basically we're going for gold recovery. Okay, all right, well, not a great deal and so like on the back here okay if you have like a, a magnifying glass you're better off going using it and just to um these are all marked so i can see c's um but i can see resistors which are going to be r and um there's no inductors here but um you know so like this line here um i can sorry i can barely see it myself but um, all that, they're all resistors, okay? Thick film resistors. Over here, we've got three little MLCCs. Mostly MLCCs, but there are resistors in amongst it. So yeah, when you, if you scrape all these off, you're going to, you know, you are going to get that mix of resistors and MLCCs, and they're so small that it's really hard to sort them out. So yeah, this is where I recommend you put this into a mixed pile of, um, you know, potentially anything, and not put these in with your really good MLCCs. This is where I recommend where it's where you're picking off the really big MLCCs. Um, uh, yeah, so you got quite large MLCCs, there's no doubt, it's got a C, there's no doubt it's an MLCC, so we picked that off, so we don't want to put this into a mixed batch, we want to put this straight into our premium MLCC pile, okay, so yeah, um, but it's only when it starts to get very, very tiny, a lot of people don't even bother, because they're so small and they can be anything, so right here I can just see, normally I, I have a large magnifying light, that I put boards under if I really want to get technical. But so, okay, so I've got a MLCC here, another one here, and there's one here that's got a slightly black, and I can see it's an L. So that's an inductor. So that's the problem when you're skimming off stuff, you're going to get inductors mixed in and that, and we just don't want that. Um, when we, you know, if we ever go to process the MLCCs, we want to, you know, really process just MLCCs. Um, so yeah, recommend that when you're taking off the really tiny ones, just to put them in a separate little pile. But here we've got a nice BGA. Right, beautiful little BGA chip. These are the highest grade BGAs, so we want to put that away. We want to take off the large MLCCs. Okay. So they're about, they're about as small as I take okay another one here and so here we've got a little little circle of MLCCs it doesn't look like there's any resistors in this pile or um, inductors so they're all capacitors they're all got C so in this case I can just skim these off and just tip it into my little pile there and there we go 
all right and here well this is quite a quite a good board um, these IC chips here I put these in with RAM ICs because they're like a memory so you've got BGAs you've got crystals got really nice um, MLCCs here got that nice gold band crystal oscillator lovely put that away in this case it's probably easier just to use the air hammer rather than each individual one because these kind of um, IC chips you know rather than trying to take them off with a screwdriver they they really they're thin and they they really smash up so in this case I will find that it's easier to use um, an air hammer um, here uh, virtually nothing on the board we've got some gold pins here and if you don't have an air hammer you could um, always when you go with these things you're best trying to remove the whole plastic part out of the pins and expose the pins right and so if you can grab onto it and just pull them out and so there's no pins left in that we can throw this out and remove this bit of plastic okay and you can see in this case these are solid gold pins beautiful right and so they come off easy all you have to do is sort of like just bend them around a bit wiggle wiggle and there we go we've got fully plated gold pins they're not always like that but um so beautiful okay so the other one it, this is even easier doing it by hand than doing it with the air hammer because once you break it off then it's a little bit harder to get the pins out so i find if you just sort of try and wiggle it wiggle the plastic off the um the pins it usually works so here we've got nothing and there's all our pins the plastic but those pins very very nice it's, uh, it's lovely when you can get these fully plated gold pins that's as nice as you can get lovely um, what else we've got so we've got also we're going to have most likely gold pins in these so again best to just break off and have a look for yourself and we can see here we've got partially plated pins so it's mostly just the tips the other side partially plated so it looks like these are plated one side and not the other so from here because now I can see them exposed I'll usually use the air hammer and just skim that off you know but again if you don't have an air hammer you know you might want to try and you know carefully pull the pins out because they're partially plated usually the part that you leave on the board doesn't have any gold plating anyway so um but yeah these are a little bit more complicated um once you're going for gold pins it starts to be a real fiddly process and very time consuming but this is this is something you do when you've got nothing better to do and you want to accumulate gold plated bits um, so we want the crystal already clean put it straight in a pile we've got two IC chips now hmm. we've got these um, these are capacitors here now these are capacitors but I don't think that they're tantalum capacitors it's a little bit hard I need a magnifying glass to really see but these don't look like if they were tantalum they should have a little gray line going down one side usually um, in this case they don't so these boxes we don't know what they are so we just have a look at one just to confirm that it's not something okay and so it, these are these boxy things there's no real it's just basically just that copper inside there's no real precious metals in there but you know um, having said that if you um, process all of these you probably would get some kind of precious metal there probably will be because there's silver and gold <laughs> in so much of these kind of things um, we got <clears throat> uh, LEDs so little lead lights um, a lot of these can be uh, have gold legs when they've got gold legs they're obviously going to be um, 
um, going to contain good gold. But in, in a lot of cases, LEDs and anything that kind of looks like them, they most likely will have a bit of silver. But the problem is that no one really recognizes them. At, you know, like there's no one saying, oh, can you, um, anyone want to sell a bag of uh, LEDs that don't look like they got gold in them? Because uh, the silver is so cheap, you know, that it's 50 cents a gram. Um, you know, it might take 500 of these to get one gram, but the problem is that with silver recoveries that you're going to use more um, uh, chemicals, then you're going to get value from the silver. That's why people are going for gold recovery, because at least we can, um, gold is worth $50 um, a gram, and so we can at least get, um, get some value out of it after we're using... Um, all the chemicals and these little switch things is um, these ones are only small they only got two little switches um, obviously they're gonna have silver um, and in and, and some cases they will have gold uh, but generally we just put these away for um, silver recovery and and again it's it's only speculating on silver recovery and see these ones well see there's a little tiny little piece in there that is gold plated right but the problem is, there we go. So we've got a really, really, really tiny gold-plated part there. So I can put that in. And there. The only problem with these kind of switches is if you um, stockpile these switches and then you have a bag and you want to sell someone a bag of switches, they're going to pay based on silver. And most people won't even buy them because based on silver, it's really not worth it. But, you know, in that case that I just showed you, you can see in that switch there is gold so th there you go that just proves that in switches it's not just about silver recovery it can be gold um, it's just depending um, on the manufacturer so I could do an another 50 of these switches on different boards and won't find any gold and so that's why we can't just take off the switches put them into a bag and say oh this is going to be gold recovery um, at best it's going to be silver recovery and then or at worst it's going to be silver recovery but possibility there will be gold ones in there um not much here so yeah uh so all I can really recommend um, when you're depopulating boards is if you're not sure what you're actually taking off is to break into it and have a look and see, um, you know, if you can see any gold. If you can't see gold, if it's only silver or colour, it most likely will only be silver. But we've also got platinum and stuff like that. So, but... What I recommend is you just go for the stuff that is well known as precious metal recovery. You know, so so these things um, with the gold pins inside, these can be really, really fiddly and very time consuming for the amount of um, gold bearing material you get. But, you know, if you're uh, um, trying to maximize everything out of the board, you're not selling, because a, a lot of these mid-grade boards are actually worth just selling as mid-grade. Like, there is no way that I would get the same value from just selling this board by just removing these IC chips for gold recovery um, and maybe some of the pins here. The rest is pretty much junk. You've got copper coils and that, and it's it's a, a lot <clears throat> worth a lot less than what we could actually sell the whole board for. So this is where it's a balance. But I, again, I'm just assuming here that um, you don't have anywhere to sell your boards and you're not interested in selling boards. You just want to take everything you can for precious metal recovery. And so in that case, okay, well, you know, you can have little little buckets of you know leds you know that there, there there is going to be um silver most likely in them um and so if silver does go up a lot in value one day say it goes up to um hundred dollars an ounce um then people are, believe me people will be looking for anything that's contain silver it happened back when silver went up to 45 us an ounce or wherever it was um keyboard mile ass people were looking for anything silver um people were, were advertising to buy crystal oscillators just to get the silver because um at the time it was worth a lot and it, it looked like silver was going to go even higher so now that silver's dropped back down to whatever it is uh australia it's about 20 dollars an ounce in america it's probably about 16 dollars an ounce it's just not you know popular anymore people aren't going for uh silver stuff um okay 
So what do we got here? So yeah, uh, until we get to the higher grade boards, all I can really recommend is um, is just going through, breaking through everything. So we got a um, we got that's a, uh, a CCD sensor in there. So it's going to have um, gold recovery, probably most likely even platinum recovery, silver recovery, no doubt. We've got a crystal oscillator here. Um, but yeah, with these mid-grade boards there, uh, not sure what I wanted to say, but so in, in this case, I'm going to, a lot of these, I'm going to just use the air hammer, uh, for my own, but obviously I want to first pick off good stuff, uh, that I don't want mixed in with the air hammer stuff. So I want to get my little crystal oscillator. There's another one, a couple more here, very small ones, but they all add up. So. I recommend it's best to remove all these by hand first so they don't get crumbled up and lost lost for good once you start um, and so here we've got a tiny little battery so that's no good to anyone and what I'll probably do is okay so we've got um, a few MLCC's Okay, I'll, I'll just leave this for depopulating with the um, air hammer because all I really want out of this now is just the IC chips and they're going to be easy to pick out of the crumble. Um, okay, let's try and get something a bit more, a bit more interesting. Okay, all right, so we've got a board here. Interesting, most likely off a... Um, plasma TV or something like that looks okay we've got some nice oh, they're not really nice but they're BGA's with the copper tops we do have some nice ones little ones here and general IC's so this is um, pretty good for IC's we've got all these things here and now a lot of cases they can be um, gold plated these are kind of well it's not gold plated it's uh, it might be flashing, but sometimes, as you can see here, uh, it's so light that it almost looks like steel anyway. But I think there are a few... Okay, okay. so these ones here are gold plating. It's, uh, it's just flashing. It's very, very fine gold. And um, because we've got all this messy plastic stuff, you want to sort of kind of remove this from it but this is not the kind of stuff you're going to throw into um there we go uh so we've got also got gold plating on the inside but this isn't the kind of stuff when it's uh, completely plated that you're going to throw into a ap or you know hyd hydrochloric acid and so on um this kind of stuff i reckon it's going to be best for um like electrolytic um, gold recovery, what do they call it? You know, um, sulfuric cell kind of thing where um, you transfer the gold from, you know, one medium to another. That kind of gold recovery rather than using acids because, uh, yeah, you're going to use so much acids to um, eat away the base metals out of this. It's probably not going to be, yeah, worth it. So I think the word I'm looking for is reverse electroplating that's what this kind of stuff is probably best suited for um so yeah I, I'd, I'd be inclined to take off all the ones that are obviously gold plated and if you can remove all that plastic crap inside uh, so in this case these ones are gold plated yep these ones are very lightly gold plated on the outside or they're just worn out that's how light the plating in but inside it's still going to be gold plated So, I think the biggest message out of this video is going to be uh, for new scrappers wanting to know what to take, apart from doing your own little research. So there you go. Now that's going to be reverse electroplated. I, I'd imagine that would be the only way to get that gold out. And as you can see, it, it was the same plating as the inside there where it's nice and goldy, um, but it's so fine that as they've put in plugs in and plugs out, it's just worn out. And, and that's only because it's not a high-end piece of equipment, so it, they, they didn't need to put gold plating 
um, in order to, like for instance, fingers. Gold fingers would wear out really quickly with the same thing. Um, and always look under these boxes, because sometimes, a lot of times you'll get uh, little IC chips. So, you know, we don't want to miss out on the little ICs. Always going to get a, a crystal or two. So there's, uh, there was, two little crystals we can throw away. We've got to get those little ICs. In this case, because I'm not going to be able to use the air hammer in there, I'll just knock them out. There we go. Just a little flat pack. It all adds up. Tiny little IC here. You know, very small, but it's still an IC chip. It's still most likely um, has the possibility of gold recovery. Um, you know, as you know, a lot of IC chips won't have any gold, um, but you know, they will have silver. Um, some could have platinum. You just don't know. It just depends on the manufacturer. So you'll get guys saying, oh, there's no, there's no um, gold in these IC chips. Well, that's not right. There's gold in pretty much a lot of these IC chips. Uh, anyway, these kind of moth sets, again, it's only really copper. So if you um, keep these, it's up to you. Well, in this case, see, inside there, this is where it's really interesting if, if you bust into a lot of these because um, there's no way that that's just going to be base metal. There's got to be silver in here. And if you look at um, um, places like Umicore and recovery rates for circuit boards and stuff, you'll find that there's a lot of silver in circuit boards. Um, and so it's got to be somewhere. So if it's, you know, a lot of people will claim, well, the solder and all that, that's just tin solder. So where is the silver then? So the silver is also within a lot of um, common items that we consider, yeah, gold recovery. But there's also silver in there. Um, ceramic CPUs. There's almost as much platinum inside a ceramic CPU as there is gold. But you go to even the higher uh, level um, backyard refiners, and they've never taken the platinum out of it. And so, but I've seen fire assay results of all the different CPUs available. And believe me, there's about 70% of platinum, 70% uh, of the value of gold is in platinum as well, and silver and copper. So um, that's why I recommend stockpiling and, and don't rush into gold recovery yourself. It's the last thing you wanna do. Um, until you're really, you know, knowledgeable and you think, well, how do I get experience if I don't start? Well, experience by using other people's experience because uh, you'll probably end up damaging yourself before you get enough experience to actually get any real gold value. You know, and you get some guys, they'll get, you know, 10 pounds of IC chips and they're ready. They say, oh, I've got, you know, 10 pounds of IC chips. I'm ready to go. How do I, how do I recover the gold? You know, and what they'll find is that they'll, their first time they'll make mistakes and they won't get much gold out of it. And they've just wasted their whole accumulation of IC chips just because they were in a rush to, to try and um, show off that they've got a, uh, a gold blob about this size when really, if they were really good at it, they may have gotten a gold blob about that size. Um, so, okay, so here we've got uh, tantalum capacitors. Well, a couple of them. So again, I want to take off the tantalum capacitors by hand because um, because of the air hammer wanting to smash them up. And so once they turn into crumble, you're not going to recognize that that was a tantalum capacitor if it's all in, in pieces. So yeah, things like that. The obvious things that we're taking out, tantalum capacitors, if you like to keep these, um, most likely we're not going to be able to, no one's really going to be able to recover tantalum in their backyard. Um, tantalum requires a very high heat for a start to melt it. But as well as tantalum, there's also a little bit of silver in these. Um, and so most people collect these to on sell later to say a tantalum uh, buyer. There is uh, one in America. Um, okay, and so over here, so we've got our main BGA chip. 
and, and it's very much like a uh, a motherboard where you've got your CPU part and usually underneath where the CPU goes or in this case this BGA chip is this square whole array of MLCCs now I don't have my magnifying glass handy but um, and there is no coding because there's so many of them well there is actually but it's a little bit hard to understand where the C belongs, you know, to which which one it corresponds to. But in this case, I can see, you know, these are so tiny, but I can see these are all MLCCs, no problem. Uh, once we get over here, we've got a mixture of resistors and MLCCs. Um, so yeah, again, if you take off really, really tiny ones, I suggest put them into a separate little um, a pile, unless, like in this case, it really looks just like MLCCs, so I can risk it. So all I want to do, I'm just running the screwdriver underneath my finger, and I'm using my finger to push down onto the board so I can scrape off all those MLCCs. And I'll just tip it all out. Okay. So I can see a little resistor I can pick out straight away. Okay. So here we go. So that's not bad. Now, you know, they're all tiny little MLCCs. Um, are they base metal or are they noble metal? We'll never know that until we actually go to recover, right? But even the fine dust sometimes you get off when you're taking off the MLCCs and you'll find like um, uh, a bigger MLCC, sometimes they'll, they'll, as you're trying to remove them off the board, they'll crush and they'll turn into a powder. That's fine. Take the whole powder and everything and you want the whole lot in with your MLC. So all my piles of MLCCs, like I've got a big bucket of them, um, you know, if I sifted it all out, underneath there will be quite a lot of fine powder. And that's all from the um, crushed up ceramic. And within that crushed up ceramic, it's all going to be palladium and silver. So, so even the powder you want to keep. So in this case, yeah. Because they're getting really small here and very mixed up, it's 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 very hard to distinguish what's an MLCC and what's an inductor and what's in a resistor. But for argument's sake, see I can see that's a tiny little resistor inductor because it's a totally different colour. But yeah, so this is a mixed bag here, and we've got thick film resistors and they're usually black on the top with a little number and underneath they can also they can be different colors usually white so in this case i'm just going to put this in with my crumbles right for for who knows what one day i'm just going to give someone a big bag of crumble and say process this and see what you can get out of it you know start with one metal and work your way back <laughs> um there you go yeah so, all right, so we, we're not using an air hammer right now. So we just want to remove all our IC chips, BJs. All right, these ones come out better long ways, actually. But yeah, so these memory ones, they can really crush up. Um, because um, you've got too much uh, leverage on the thing, it's sort of breaking them. Whereas uh, when you're using a air hammer on these kind of ICs, they they literally just pop off um, with the force. So there we go. Okay, so don't get excited with these BGAs. Um, these are kind of almost like half the value of of one of these BGAs because that part up the top here has got the bonding wires as well. In fact, more than the base. These ones don't because they've just got a copper top, okay? And so we're really going for the fiber and uh, in a lot of cases you'll find nothing. So, so they're not that crash hot. These ones are good. So these are 10 times the value of these. That's how I value them. I buy these for $80 a kilo, $70 a kilo. I buy these for about $7 a kilo, something like that. And these ones the most because they don't have the um, excess plastic on the side. So these are the highest value, $80 a kilo. All right. So yeah, um, just picking off my crystals. I want the crystals. 
lots on that. There was two there and four on the board. That's six on one board. So, you know, there's a lot. Um, again, all these aluminium capacitors we don't want. These little chokes and transformer type things we don't really want. Well, we do want, but we, we put these in with transformers and stuff. So it's low value. There's no precious metal recovery. And again, someone's going to turn around and say, oh, well, I found a bunch of these, or there's a guy that processed a bunch of these, and he got 10 grams of silver out of a, a pound of these, you know. Um, well, I'm not going to argue with that, but um, it really depends on the manufacturer. And, um, so, and how are we going to tell which manufacturer made that, you know, because it's not the manufacturer of the board they buy these components from different manufacturers and and different configurations they'll say yeah we want the one with a little bit of silver in it you know or we want the one with no silver in it you know because we want to save a bit of money you're not going to know that um and so that's why we're just going for the obvious things that we really know that have got precious metal recovery um so here you know this board is actually loaded with mlccs um you know so and it's quite easy ones because this whole row here is all mlccs the row next to it is all thick film resistors bar one little mlcc so we don't want all these so this is where it's a problem when we're using the air hammer is we're going to get all these and it's all going to mix up into one crumble so if you can stay on one line remove those mlccs without touching the the line of resistors and then you know well okay in this case We've just got MLCCs, we'll keep them. But yeah, I don't really, you know, it's up to you. A lot of people that um, uh, that I know that started picking off MLCCs no longer go much for the smaller ones because they're just so small, very time consuming. They just go for the big stuff on more of the high end boards. So here, yeah, I can't really um, see much much different things on these mid-grade boards they're all pretty much straightforward um it's still we've still got aluminium and copper um and you know just you know it's mostly we just want the ic chips basically if we see crystals you know like here the back of this board it's loaded with mlccs but they're all mixed in with resistors and inductors and all kinds of things and they're so small that if you um, skim off all this, you're most likely going to get as much solder as you're going to get anything worthwhile. So uh, I'm not saying don't take this off. If you've got time, you've got nothing better to do, you want to maximize your value. But these aren't all MLCCs. So you put this in with your crumbles and potluck kind of pile and, um, and go from there. All right. And so... See here, that, that little black, now it looks like a, a black tantalum capacitor because it's got a little grey line on one side. So that's where it's important to read that label. It's a D, D for dog, D6, a D stands for diode. So even though it looks like a tantalum capacitor, it's not because, because it's got that grey polarity line, it's still a diode. So this is the problem when... Um, with buying black MLC, um, black tantalum capacitors is because a lot of people mix these diodes in thinking, well, well, it's black, it's got a gray stripe, it must be. And so when you're depopulating with an air hammer, you're not going to know whether that is an ML, uh, whether it's a uh, tantalum capacitor or a diode because once it's removed off the board, there's no real way to tell. So, okay, so yeah, you know, it's mounted on each end. It looks like a tantalum capacitor, but it's not. So this is where it's hard to um, buy tan black tantalum capacitors uh, from people that, from anyone else apart from yourself. Because I know, um, you know, I only remove tantalum capacitors if I'm sure it's a tantalum capacitor. In that case, if I sorted out tantalum capacitors out of this, um, I'm going to find Let's try and find one. Um, okay. So there we go. This looks like a tantalum capacitor. Um, it's got a grey stripe on one side. 
okay but i can't tell for sure it is a tantrum capacitor because it could be a diode because i can't read what's on the board anymore right whereas if it's a yellow tantalum capacitor well there's no question because i know there's nothing really else that looks like that um with the brown strip on one side there is no diodes that look like that they're all tantalum so yellow are easy to buy the black ones you've really got to read off the board whether it was um whether it's labeled with a c or a d if it's a c it's a tantalum if it's a d it's just a diode uh, may have a little bit of silver content now some uh, some will ask well okay so say if i've got black tantalum capacitors and i've got black diodes mixed in with that is that going to be a problem well it's not going to be a problem because um there is silver content in black tantalum capacitors as well as diodes so all you're going to get is just you're just going to get a lower um recovery rate of tantalum compared to what you expected say if you had 10 pounds of tantalum capacitor you would expect x amount of tantalum but if they were mixed with a whole heap of diodes in there you're not going to get as much tantalum but you'll still probably get the silver because diodes do have a bit of silver so um yeah i just wanted to mention that um you've seen me sort of trying to pop these memory ones off um yeah <clears throat> I wasn't thinking uh, straight at the time, but yeah, that's not how I remove the uh, memory chips off uh, when I'm doing it by hand. The easiest way is simply just getting a screwdriver and just rubbing down one side of each, well, each side, or one side, and then you just pop them off. So that, that's that's the best way. Um, I just wasn't thinking about it at the time. So yeah, um, everything else, like obviously BJ's and flat packs, you know, they all come off pretty easily like that. But yeah, it's just when you got these really flat um, memory chips. Same as when you're taking them off hard drives or. Um, if you're de depopulating ram sticks by hand this is the way and it's um, pretty straightforward yeah there's, there's not a whole lot of things that um, you know as I've mentioned that I, I can really take off or show you uh, what to remove off a basic mid-grade board that's um, you know not as you know already pretty straightforward yeah, all I can really say is that if you get something that's really unusual, um, you're best off just, just getting into it and seeing what's actually inside it. Like this, it's some kind of... Uh, looks like... It's getting a bit dark, I can't really see, but it's yeah, some kind of capacitor or something, but it's not tantalum. And you just go through and have a look inside. And if you can't see gold, then obviously we're not going for gold recovery. But, you know, if you feel that um, there could be silver, like in here, like it wouldn't surprise me if there's, you know, at least a little bit of silver in here. Um, and so, therefore, if you think that, then you're probably best off, you know, like, if it's not a recognizable component then you're best off taking that little bit of metal stuff out and then just putting it into a little pile of you know like i've got uh, here i've got all kinds of little gold bearing things obviously you know the easy stuff like gold pins and stuff but i, I do get unusual looking things that have got gold bearing or i'm just not sure how to process um like these um what are they, the, um, uh, oh, can't think of them right now, uh, the CCD sensors. Um, now, you know, with these, I'm not really sure, I keep these separate because I don't know which, where, how am I going to process it? Is it going to go with IC chips? Are they going to go with BGA chips or are they going to go with CPUs? So anything that you're really not sure how you're going to recover whatever you whatever it looks like is in there um, I just put in a little thing like that so this is gold bearing stuff um, so if you do get little things 
and and you break open things and there's no obvious gold but you do see uh, what could be silver um, then I recommend taking out those little pieces of what looks like silver and then just making your own little silver tray where you just got all kinds of stuff um, that you think um, you know that you've taken out of these kind of components and you think that they, they contain silver and don't be surprised if um, what you think might be silver could even um, be a trace of platinum in there you know we just don't know so um, you know by all means just um, go for the you know just just keep it but uh, but you're better off keeping it in the pro half process state rather than um, as a component uh, unless you know what they really are and then you can do a bit of research and you can say okay well what's in a thingamajig and um, and there's a lot of data out there that you'll be able to research on you know and and, and see what's actually what they're made up of or and um, what the uh, chances of it being precious metals um, but yeah um, yeah mid-grade boards don't really have anything so unusual where you're going to say well um, what is on these boards you know or what do I take off because it's really really pretty much straightforward it's m mostly only IC chips crystals MLCCs and you know okay like here we got a this is an, obviously another modem board now along the top here these are little LEDs they're really you know they're just uh, surface mounted LEDs really tiny but um, these will have silver and uh, I can't say on these ones but a lot of these little flat LEDs on boards can also be gold so but these ones are definitely silver I can see that there's you know what looks like silver so if you like you can keep these kind of little things and again put it in that little silver pile or if you do see you put under sunlight and if you can see a little bit of gold on the edges and stuff you could put it into oddball gold recovery um, if you had a whole you know thousands of them then you would have um, a separate uh, thing just for LEDs but uh, generally you know most boards do have something written on them like there'll be a code so MLCC will be a C but you know again um, a lot of, some people get confused that oh it's a C so it must be an MLCC no a C stands for capacitor so an MLCC is one type of capacitor so that's a capacitor a, a multi-layer ceramic capacitor okay but you know a tantalum will also be C because it's also a capacitor um, and they're the only two type of capacitors that we really keep off board so when you see C marking on a board if it's not an MLCC or it's not a tantalum capacitor it's just a regular capacitor and it could be you know like these little brownie things they're capacitors there will be a C on the board but there is no tantalum in there and there is no palladium in there there could be again silver but we can go on I can take any item off this board and say there is a possibility that there's a little bit of silver um, obviously the the um, aluminium capacitors here these can ones um almost no no chance that there would be even any trace of silver there is just no need for silver to be in there but hey there could be a manufacturer says hey we've got really high-end aluminium capacitors and we've put a little dab of silver in there you know and then you might get someone that's bought and bought a factory lot um of capacitors with that silver and then they'll they'll recover the silver and they'll say oh hang on no there is silver in capacitor because i just did 10 pounds and um i got silver but that could be a very specific batch no one uh will tell you that there is any precious metals in these capacitors um and and so there's no reason to believe that you know someone might have an oddball sampling that they did get a little bit of silver out of that um but it's no it's not the case so with mid-grade so look it depopulating boards is really straightforward even if you don't know what you're taking off like you say you pull out this little thing and you say oh, well 
what is that? Is that worth taking off? Well, if you're not going to do anything else with the board, um, you're just going to throw the board at our, 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 throw the board away once you've finished with it. Then, then, yeah, well, you can take it. Um, it just depends on your time, and you know, it's all about experience. It takes time, but you know, eventually you're going to pick up information if you go to forums like. Uh, gold recovery forum and and even um, there's a bunch of guys on Facebook now I don't use Facebook um, but there is a gold recovery um, group on Facebook that you know so you know you've got to do a little bit of research no one's going to show you uh, or are going to be able to show you every particular component and what's what to pick because every board is different so you're going to come up with a, a new oddball component and so if you want to identify what it is you know if there's no um, obvious part number uh, try and look at the coding of where it is on the board and if you can't even do that then maybe look for the part number of the actual circuit board and see if you can find that online where they'll show you a whole diagram of what's on that particular circuit board and they'll have an arrow pointing to that and that's a this and that's a that and that's a that and then you can go on researching from there but but generally you know um for scrappers this isn't rocket science you know this is very straightforward we're not um we're not it technicians we're just scrappers and we're going for precious metal recovery so um it's it's you know it's all very straightforward um the main thing you want is the obvious things that everyone knows is the ic chips is is uh things that got gold like gold pins um, you know, you know now the capacitors, you know the crystal oscillators, you've got the gold ones, you've got the regular crystals, um, you know, you've got these kind of crystal oscillators with the four sides, the square oblong types, right? So we put all this away. We know that within there it's, it's predominantly um, silver recovery. Sometimes in these, like inside these, these are different to say a crystal a crystal when you open these up all there is is a piece of crystal and inside that crystal there is a little piece of silver okay and it's pure silver um, in these these are different you open these up and inside it's a little circuit board so you'll also have a bit of silver from the crystal side of it but it's a it's an oscillator so there is a circuit board in there and on that circuit board there will be you know it's just a miniature version of like that so it'll be all kinds of little things so so generally we go for silver recovery you know um the gold ones we know that there's you know we're going for gold here because we're treating these like ceramic cpus um the crystal oscillators you know on the board they look identical to the silver ones but when you flip them over if there is a gold base then obviously we're going for gold here and uh, the silver is um, there will be silver in this as well just like in a regular one right but it becomes you know a, a non-issue because now we're just going for the gold and even just this if you remove this gold plate i mean you can recover this gold along with the gold tops on ceramic cpus you know like you got the uh, 486s and they've got the gold top so you can put these in with those gold tops and process inside you might find something um you might find more gold bearing thing we'll try and open one just to uh um give an example i'll just see if I can get a grip on it okay it's getting a bit dark because I had to go out and um, do a little pickup so I'm just sort of catching back up on this video now all right it's been a while since I've opened one of these so I can't remember how I did it I'm gonna just try and squash it Okay. I think we're going to have much luck, but still worth a try. Yeah. Not going to have much luck in getting into this. Yeah, really made a mess of this one. 
seems like these gold ones seem to be harder than the silver ones tend to just pop open um, yeah no maybe I can do it with one of these bigger ones I hope the camera can still see because it's starting to get quite dark it's about daylight savings but it's about 8 o'clock at night here I'm not going to be able to open it. I need a vice or... See, no one said gold recovery was easy. Okay. All right. So this is nice. So we've got the, the gold... underneath as well and there's also uh, legs that are gold but you can see the um, the circuit board and this is what they mean by crystal oscillator because the oscillator I, this is I'm just assuming right that the oscillator part is this actual board because there's also a crystal here as well okay so there's a crystal within a crystal oscillator and if you'll notice this one the base of this crystal oscillator so that is just a miniature version of this and uh, I think I've shown you guys once before that the bases of these are just tin yeah or uh, stainless steel whatever but some of these bases are actually gold and especially the ones coming out of the crystal oscillator so so that's a crystal but I don't put them with the silver ones because it's got the gold base I put it in with the gold stuff um, don't know if I'm going to be able to get let me just try and get this board out. Okay. And here we go. So this board, it's just like a little circuit board. Now we're, what we've got, we've got an IC chip here. Nothing there. We've got a, uh, it looks like a little MLCC there. The other side, pretty much nothing really. We do have the gold legs that were um, mounted to the top of this. Some legs still there. So, but really, this is, you know, we can remove these little fine gold legs, and this is just a circuit board. We're not really going to get any real gold recovery out of it. Actually, I think that that might be, yeah, it looks like a little tantalum capacitor, believe it or not, and an IC chip. So there's not much in that crystal oscillator, in this one, apart from this cap. So this cap is probably the best thing that we got here. Okay, so we can throw this away. That's no good to us anymore. And this cap here, we can process this with other kind of gold caps. It uh, looks like it's a two piece and there's a piece of metal in between. So again, we might have to uh, work on this and pry it open again. But um, th that's about the best value part. And it's actually not too bad um, for gold recovery. So that was that there. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm looking forward to going to the more higher grade boards. I don't know about you. Um, I, I think I've shown just about everything I can show in what to take off a mid grade board. Um, you know, there's thousands of boards, varieties, it could be anything. So there will always be an oddball item. Um, that I, I haven't shown you for sure um, but maybe we'll get to those when we get to the higher grade boards uh, we still got to get through motherboards which aren't really high grade either as far as the populating um, but um, yeah just you know I'm just trying to give a little bit of help to um, yeah just those guys that have really no idea on what to take um, hopefully this will give you a little bit more of an example um, but like I said, there are forums. Um, we've got a forum at in Australia, Scrap Forum. You might want to come on there or go to the Gold Recovery Forum. There's forums all over the place. Um, and um, as I mentioned, the Facebook group, sign up with them. There's always people there that will give you a little bit of advice, especially if you're looking at going into Gold Recovery. But um, I, I recommend 
listening to the people that have been recovering gold for 20 or 30 years, not guys that have just, you know, done a batch of gold fingers or, you know, pins and stuff like that or um, whatever, um, you know, because gold recovery is very dangerous. So that's why I've gone to the stockpiling side of it. I'm going to do a lot more videos, you know, over time, um, updating on the stockpiling of it. And hopefully um, one day precious metals um, go as high as they should be and where no one really has to go for the gold recovery and we can just uh, value our um, e-waste recovery bits just by the content, you know. Um, you know, uh, gold fingers are worth X amount today uh, with gold being, what, $1,200 US an ounce? Well, you know... It's only speculation, but, um, you know, at the moment, sure, it's worth recovering the gold fingers today, even at $1,200 an ounce. But imagine if gold went to $10,000 or $20,000 an ounce. How worth it would it be then? Um, chemicals will be cheap. It'll be just like buying bottles of water compared to the recovery that we're getting out of gold. So, you know, I wouldn't, you know, don't rush in into um, gold recovery, especially new scrappers. If you're um, so new that you're wondering what to pick off a board, you're years away from recovering gold yourself. Um, and it's not just about having the right equipment, but really knowing what you're doing. And, you know, because there are a lot of things in here like lead and arsenic and, oh, I don't know, all really weird, wacky kind of, um, chemicals that we can produce from trying to recover the innocent gold you know you've got chromium and you know all these really bad stuff and um, unless you're really experienced or you're getting advice from a really experienced uh, gold recovery person um, you know you could be um, you know you know putting yourself at real risk and I'm talking about serious serious risk like you know you know I'm not going to go into that it's obvious, you know, you play with chemicals, it can be deadly. So, um, yeah, but don't let that put you off. Stockpiling uh, precious metal recovery items for gold recovery. Because if everything, um, if gold and all precious metals rise up a lot in value, which they should, one day they will, because our economy is crap. Um, and if, you know... God forbid we actually go to back to a gold standard. It would be a whole different ball game, and that's why they're trying to keep us from going back to a gold standard. Because the bankers of this world um, won't be making as much money. And uh, any time a a president tries to go back to the gold standard, like if we go back to JFK, JF John F Kennedy wanted our economy or the U.S. economy to go back to the gold standard right because it once was the gold standard and it was the golden era of america and the world uh america was a true superpower when they had the gold standard once they got down to the fiat currency or the the new banking system i don't know they they went off the gold standard and when jfk said oh i want to go back to the gold standard what happened to jfk he's no longer there is he so um that's that's how important it is for these governments of the world not to go back to the gold standard but who knows you know something else might change and um we might go back or or just precious metals in general will just uh blow out and um that's when you're going to be really grateful that you've just picked your stuff not you don't need a gold bar to show that there is gold uh we know um, we know this platinum here, we know this tantalum here, we know this gold here, okay? I know there's gold in there. Uh, I, I see chips, we know there's gold. So there's no question what you're stockpiling, okay? It's not a secret. So don't worry about gold recovery so much. Pick everything off your board, stockpile it, and if one day you turn around and say, look, I'm never going to recover this stuff, um, but I've got, you know, all this stockpile, I'm never going to go into recovery, well, that's fine. You won't have any problem at all selling this stuff and probably for as much, if not more, than what you would actually get yourself. Anyway, guys, I've talked enough. Um, 
look out for the next video should be even more ex much more exciting than this one um, when we're getting into the higher end boards and then there's real good stuff to depopulate and talk about and identify that should be really good so keep an eye out for that video keep scrapping have fun and i'll catch you next time guys